1004 is also known as the Residential Troubleshooter DPD Liquid Drop Test Kit. It allows you to test for free chlorine, total chlorine, pH, acid demand, and total alkalinity. So you can do as much as you can with the Taylor K2005, but you can still do pretty much the basics. With the K1004, you're going to want to be more hands-on with River Ben Sandler Pool Supply. You're going to want to come see us at least every three to four weeks. That's why we recommend the K2005, as it allow you to test more at your home and allow you to be more hands-off with coming into River Ben Sandler Pool Supply for proper water chemistry. The K1004, though, is still a good solution for a liquid test kit. So, I'm going to show you how to use this kit in an interactive way so that you have some confidence when you go in to test your water for the first time. Okay, so, first thing we're going to test for is chlorine. Chlorine is the yellow bottles. They're labeled, different numbers, and the instructions for testing the chlorine are in the yellow box inside of the lid. Very simple to use. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take the plastic comparator and use the chlorine compartment. The chlorine compartment is located on the left it has CL and BR next to it. BR stands for bromine, CL stands for chlorine. The chlorine column is the one that we need to pay attention to. Unless you have a bromine system, which is kind of rare, in which case you'll want to look under the BR column. So, what we do, take a proper pool sample, take that water, and fill it up to the mark at the top of the comparator compartment for chlorine. Now, we're going to take the very first yellow bottle, which is R0001, and we're going to hit that sample with five drops. When you do a drop, make sure the bottle is completely inverted and that you get a proper drop. If you hold it to the side or at an angle, you're at a possibility of only getting a half to three quarters of a drop, which will give you an inaccurate reading. So, with the bottle completely inverted, do five drops. Now, the sample is ready to tell you a chlorine reading. The first thing we're going to test for is called free chlorine. Free chlorine is the amount of chlorine in your water that is available to remove contaminants and sanitize microorganisms. Take R002, invert the bottle, and add five more drops. Now, using the caps provided or just your thumb, cover the top of that compartment and give it a good shake. Hopefully the water will turn a shade of pink. This means that you have free chlorine. Match the shade of pink of the water sample to the shades listed on the right under the CL column. This will give you your free chlorine reading. For example purposes, let's say that we got a free chlorine reading of one part per million. Now, the next thing we need to test for is called total chlorine. Total chlorine is going to tell you the entire amount of chlorine, both free chlorine and chlorine that is actively combating some contaminant in your water. Take R003, Add five more drops into the exact same sample. Using the caps provided or just your thumb, cover the compartment and give it a good shake. Now, compare the shade of pink in the water sample to the one underneath the CL column. For example purposes, let's say that our total chlorine reading is two parts per million. The third chlorine reading that we can get from this test kit is called combined chlorine. Combined chlorine is simply chlorine in your water that has combined with a nitrogen or ammonia based contaminant and is currently oxidizing that contaminant in your water. Sometimes these combined chlorines can hang around and form what's called chloramines. Chloramines are the irritating smelly chlorine that bothers your throat, nose, and eyes. So, the way we figure out combined chlorine is we take our total chlorine reading, which for example purposes was two. Then we take our free chlorine reading, which was 1, and we subtract free chlorine from total chlorine. So 2 minus 1 is 1. Our combined chlorine is 1. What do we do about combined chlorine? Well, we can either use a non-chlorine potassium monoprosulfate based oxidizing compound, which will eliminate the organic attached to the chlorine molecule and free that chlorine back up. Or we can shock the pool to 10 times the amount combined chlorine. So, if our combined chlorine reading is 1, we need to shock the pool to 10 parts per million free chlorine in order to break down that 1 part per million combined chlorine. I think the non-chlorine shock is going to be the way to go. Okay, so that's how you test for chlorine using the K1004. Now let's test for pH. 
With the K1004, you can only do pH and acid demand. There is no base demand test in this kit. So what we do, go ahead, empty the chlorine water sample back into the pool and rinse the compartment. Now we need to use the other compartment on the opposite side for the pH. Again, take your water sample and fill this compartment up to the notch at the top. Taking the R0014, the K1004's version of the pH indicator liquid, do five drops. Make sure the bottle is completely inverted. Using the caps provided or just your thumbs, cover the top and give it a good shake. Now, just like with chlorine, we need to match the color of the water sample to the colors of the pH provided next to it. For example purposes, let's pretend that our pH was 8.0. So what we need to do now is figure out how much muriatic acid to add to bring our pH back into range. Take R0015, which is the K1004's acid demand reagent. Add it one drop at a time and shake the sample up until you're able to turn that high pH color back down to 7.4. Count the number of drops that it took to do this. Now if you'll take the little booklet out of the lid of the K1004, after you've gotten the number of drops that you need, you'll see that there is a red acid demand treatment table on the inside. So let's say that it took us three drops. We go to the treatment table and look for the section that says lowering pH using muriatic acid. It's in the middle. So we did three drops to achieve a pH of 7.4 and our pool is 10,000 gallons. So it's going to take 1.72 pints of muriatic acid to lower our pH down. That's about roughly a little over three cups, about three and a half cups of acid. Muriatic acid can be added simply by measuring it out at eight ounce intervals at a time and pouring them next to returns in your pool. This will help mix the acid up and ensure that the acid doesn't fall down to the bottom of your pool in a concentrated area and cause pitting. Now that we've tested our pH, we need to move on to alkalinity, which is the last thing that we can test for using the K1004 test kit. To test for alkalinity, we're going to want to take out the round plastic compartment. Once you have that, take some pool water and fill that compartment up to the 25 milliliter mark. Now, alkalinity is the green test. It's the green bottles. We need to take the first green bottle, which is R0007. It's a thiosulfate do two drops into that water sample. Now, take the next bottle, R0008, it's the alkalinity indicator. Do five drops into that sample. Now what we need to do, instead of shaking it up, is a process called swirling. So take the little compartment, grab it by the bottom, and start to swirl. Should give you a nice swirling action, and that green drop liquid should become uniform throughout the entire water sample. Once the water sample is uniformly green, we need to keep swirling it. Take the last green bottle, which is R0009, sulfuric acid, and slowly add one drop at a time while we swirl, giving that drop plenty of time to mix into the sample. We're looking for how many drops it takes to turn that green liquid into a solid pink color. For example purposes, let's say it took seven drops. We take the amount of drops of the sulfuric acid that it took to turn the green color to a pink color and we multiply that number of drops by 10. So 7 drops multiplied by 10 is 70 parts per million. That's a little bit low for alkalinity. So what we need to do now is refer to that dosage chart inside of the K1004 and look at the alkalinity treatment table. Since our alkalinity is low we need to raise it. So I'm at 70. I need to get in between 80 and 120, preferably 110. It's probably the best spot for it. So I need to add 40 parts per million alkalinity. So I go open the little pamphlet in the lid, find the table, it's under the green section, it says raising alkalinity using sodium bicarbonate. So I need to raise it 40 parts per million. So in a 10,000 gallon pool, 1.4 pounds of sodium bicarbonate will raise my alkalinity by 10 parts per million. So I need to do some math here. I need to multiply 1.4 pounds by 4. So that gives me roughly 5.6 pounds of sodium bicarbonate in order to raise my alkalinity level from 70 to 110. Free chlorine, total chlorine, pH, and total alkalinity are what we can test for with this kit. 
frequency of testing. You want to test your free chlorine and your pH every two to three days. Some of the kits recommend daily, but that may be a bit excessive unless you're heavily using the pool. However, two to three days for your free chlorine and pH is a good idea. You're going to want to test your total alkalinity, your total chlorine, weekly. Now that you know how to use a K1004, test your pool water, get your results, and using our online water testing module, input your results to get a proper treatment table with video instruction on how to treat your water. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you for choosing RiverbendPoolSupply.com for all your swimming pool needs. Thank <laughs> you.